Welcome back, you bigots. I've done this video uh, four times and lost it, so this should be quick. Uh, originally, I conceived it as a little list. Uh, see if you can uh, check your history a little. So do you know uh, Senator Ann Coombs, uh, Aaron Pizzi, or Aaron Pizzi? Just, let's just start with Senator Ann Coombs and Aaron Pizzi. Senator Ann Coombs is the, was the first black female senator in Canadian history. Less like 50, uh, or try not to make excessive use of expletives, but for about 50 convenient alliterations ago, Senator Ann Coombs was, became the first uh, black female green person with uh, a ponytail, elected to the Canadian Senate. And her nickname was Senator Anne Behind Every Violent Man Cools. You'll notice I've said Coombs. I don't know where I got Coombs from. Her name is Cool, C-O-O-L. Isn't it cool that her name is Cool? Okay, we cool with Anne Cool. And Behind Every Violent Man Cool is the first uh, purple and green uh, senator of, the, of Canada. And what she, the line that they, the word that they don't include because it's funny. Behind Every Violent Man is a Violent Mother. I can't believe she's not in jail. She's uh, 2018. She was doing lectures for uh, CAFE, the men's rights organization in Canada. Like, just the uh, <clears throat> preposterousness of them having to ask the feminists of, on Toronto uh, campus if they could write, open a men's rights thing and sucking up to feminists to open a uh, men's rights thing. And I don't think that they were ever allowed. Maybe now. Okay, so uh, I, this is not good for my blood pressure. Um, yeah, there it is. That's uh, Senator Ann Cools, in case you're uh, wanting to brush up on your history. And the next one is Aaron Pizzi. Aaron Pizzi uh, was a, really concerned about um, the... A plight of women um, abused by men, as evidenced by the fact that in London she opened the world's first feminist, no, it wasn't feminist, the world's first uh, women's shelter. And she was told, and no, uh, no uh, question about it, no, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that uh, because, I don't know if she was told this, but there's too much money to be made by uh, pushing, there's too much money to be made, too much power to be gotten by pushing the narrative that domestic violence is one way. She was prevented from opening a shelter for men in the 1960s. Her name is Erin Pizzi, and that woman, I believe, is still alive. I mean, if she, if she had died, the CBC actually would have uh, reported on it, right? Erin Pizzi, uh, Senator Ann Coombs. And so... Senator Ann Coombs actually uh, did a presentation with a man named Donald uh, Dutton. Donald Dutton knows more about... Senator Ann Coombs wouldn't say this, but Donald Dutton knows more about domestic violence than anybody on the planet. And he's a Canadian. And uh, the last I heard of him, uh, one of his uh, PhD graduates had come over for help with her homework assignment. Lovely little... Uh, lady of color and the next thing you know uh he's been fired on because uh of some sexual harassment thing so they canceled him they negated him and you could just watch the video he knows more about domestic violence than anybody okay here it is here's the the saying uh this is i looked i look up sayings so this is an african proverb if a man tells you he's going to uh, kill you in his sleep, go ahead and go asleep. If a woman tells you she's going to kill you in your sleep, stay awake. African proverb. Uh, so what I've got, <clears throat> these are the big names. 
Senator Ann Coombs is second. Aaron Pizzi is first. Who would be first? I would say Donald Dutton is third. Uh, Janice Viamengo, of course, but she wasn't. She started out as a feminist. She she was an English literature major. She joined the feminist brigade, whatever the thing, and she, she started looking at the research and the the scholarship. And she said, "This is just nonsense. You don't have facts. You don't have logic. You're ideologues spouting nonsense." And uh, I'm horrified. And I'm going to start uh, calling you out. She's been doing it for twenty years. Janice F Fiamengo is a national treasure, and she's Canadian. Ann Coombs is Canadian, Donald Dutton is Canadian, Ken Zucker is Canadian. Wow. Ken Zucker, again, uh, these uh, superlatives might not be quite right. He probably knows more about transgender issues than anyone in the world. He'd be in the top 10, absolutely for sure. Ken Zucker, and he was a little bit concerned that uh, the practice in Canada now if a kid comes and tells you he's the opposite sex or the opposite sex, then you just agree with them. So he's thinking, well, no, you know, there's a lot of reasons that a kid might think he's the other sex, like, you know, maybe because they encourage it, you know, get all this attention, you're so special if you change sex. So he's going like, no, hang on, uh, maybe that's not the right policy. And they fired him. They fired him, and he said that most transgender kids don't remain transgender. Okay, let's put it this way. If I was uh, born uh, 20 years ago, I would have spent my life as a woman. And, you know, I'm pretty glad that I didn't. I'm, like, when you really get in, dig into the details on that, I'm really... Uh, unfortunate use of expletive, glad that didn't happen. Uh, the protection against that sort of thing happening now are gone. The world has never seen anything as insane as this. You could you could point to the Nazis and you go, okay, you know, that's really bad, obviously, and it's you know to the violence. But I don't think it was as crazy as this. It wasn't as crazy as this. There was a stronger. Uh, philosophical foundation for that than there is for this. There is no foundation for this. Um, and Will Farrell. So uh, Will Farrell uh, was a prominent uh, feminist for a long time. And what happened was he started getting concerned that uh, feminism was actually hurting boys and that just boys were suffering. And then he just sort of jumped ship. And is, you know he's uh, been on the or good ship lollipop for like 20 years or so. But uh, so he, the the video you want to see is Will Ferrell UBC protest. It's still there. I can't believe it's still there. YouTube, I salute you. They say that you uh, limit freedom of expression. YouTube, nothing has ever been even remotely close to what YouTube allows people to do. You allowed me to do this. So, uh, you know, my guys complain of censorship on YouTube. Yeah, uh, expletive you, frankly, that's nonsense. Maybe, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, I think that your money supply is cut off, so that's huge, but no. Okay, so Will Ferrell is there, and he's going to do a, a presentation on men's rights. And uh, a bunch of... Uh, Nazis show up and they're un they're unhappy with him uh, doing a presentation on men's rights, and there's a scene where they confront a, a, a young man. He's he's going into the listen to the Will Ferrell's uh, presentation at UBC, and they interrupt him going in uh, just uh, expletives galore at the cops at him. He's walking in and they say, "Explain yourself. You know what are you doing here?" And he says, "Well." Um, over the last couple of years, a couple of my good friends have committed suicide, and I thought that maybe uh, I could learn something at this Will Ferrell event. And like the feral, half feral, but well-educated, well-fed, uh, happily clad individuals at the protest 
continued to berate him for like about, well, as long as it took him to get in, in the door. He was there to find out why, if he could find some solutions to why his uh, friends had committed suicide and they would not stop. Okay, so that's my top five. And Senator Ann Cools, Donald Dutton, uh, two Canadians, Ken Zucker, another Canadian, Janice Fiamengo, another Canadian, Aaron Pizzi, British, uh, Will Farrell, American. Uh, and with that, I bid you adieu.